So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use VDB files in Unreal Engine for real-time use cases. Now, if you have tried to use VDBs in the past, you know what I'm talking about. It's a hassle and let's be honest, it doesn't work. First of all, you need to do a lot of uh, shader stuff to like make it look right. And even if it does look right, it has to be like really optimized. So, you know, I've been searching for months for a actual legit way to make this work. And I think I found the best way to use VDB files in Unreal Engine for games and for cinematics as well. So this is what uh, you're going to have by the end of this video. And I'm going to show you the whole workflow, how this thing works. And it's completely free. So in my scene here, you can see that I have four VDB sequences. Just the thought of running four VDB sequences at the same time in real time, 60 frames per second. It's not possible. Like that was totally impossible. So before I start with this video, I'm going to give a shout out to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description. Okay, now let's get started with the video. You need to go to this website. I'm going to leave this link down in the description. This is Zebra VDB and this is completely free. So let's get the plugin for Unreal Engine. So here you need to do two things. You need to get the plugin and the license key. So let's get the plugin first. So this is going to redirect you to the fab page. And here you just add it to your library and view it in your launcher. This is going to open up the Epic Games launcher. Now, as you can see, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.6 and I've already installed the plugin. So to install the plugin, you need to search for the plugin and press install to engine, select your engine version and that's it. After installation, you need to enable the plugin. So after this, let's set up the license key. So go to file project settings and go to the plugin section, go to the Zebra VDB license and here you need to paste your license key. So this is a straightforward process. Go back to the website, add your email ID and they're going to give you a license key. So copy that and paste it right there. So that's all you need to do to set up this thing. So now the plugin thing is sorted and let's get some VDB files. So Zebra VDB gives us some free VDB files. Let's get these. And here you'll notice one thing. The file format is not a .vdb file format. It's a .zebra VDB file format. So this file format is a compressed file format. It basically uses a different algorithm to compress the VDB data. Each file is about 200 MB, which is really uncommon in VDB sequences. This is something like Nano VDB. That's like NVIDIA's implementation. But uh, yeah, let's get these files now. So let's download this. So after your download is done, let's import these files. So you can create a folder here and let's import our VDBs. And now you can drag and drop this file in your scene. And that's all you need to do. You can see the shaders are set up. Just to demo this, I'm also going to rotate the direction light. And you can see that this is casting a shadow as well. So let's go to the detail panel now. And let's take a look at some of these settings. First setting to note is the heterogeneous volume thing. So if you turn this on, you're going to get a completely different look. The heterogeneous volume is Unreal Engine's default method. So it's going to use a uh, sparse volumetric textures, I believe. And uh, it's going to swap out the shaders as well. And this is a different method of like representing and rendering um, VDB files. So I would suggest like not to use this because it gives me some artifacts. If it works for you, it's fine. But in my case, it's giving me some artifacts. So I'm going to turn that off. Next, we have the density option. So this is the smoke density. 
you can play with the density if you decrease the density to zero smoke is going to disappear and you only get fire so that is something to keep in mind if you want fire or if you want to isolate fire you can do that like this you have color options as well you have the scattering color and absorption color So next we have the flame setting and here we have the color of the flame itself. Next we have the temperature option. So temperature is sort of like a global attribute. So for example, if I change the temperature color, it's going to change the overall color of my simulation. Now let's take a look at some quality options. So here we have enable ambient lighting. So this is the skylight contribution. Next we have shadow intensity. So if you want darker shadows, you can increase that value. And here under the render, you have filtering options as well as the volume resolution. So volume resolution is super important. This is basically your quality, um, your voxel count. You could think of it like that. So if the VDB is further away from the camera, you could maybe get away by using half the quality. And if it's like closer to the camera, you obviously will need to use the full quality. Under the playback, we have the animate option. If you turn this off, the animation is going to stop. So if you want to use this VDB in a level sequence, in a cinematic, you'll have to animate the current frame property. So I think we have covered all the important settings for this VDB workflow. So I'm going to add this one as well. And this is explosion. And again, two VDBs running in real time. How cool is that? Let's add a third one. This is a shock wave. And you know, you could do a lot with these VDBs. I mean, for the shockwave, you could maybe repurpose this uh, to make a cloudscape or like ground fog as well. So again, super cool technique to make localized fog. So now let me show you how you can use a custom VDB file and compress it and use it in Unreal Engine. So let's go to the Embergen website. And if you guys don't know what Embergen is, Embergen is basically a smoke and fire simulation tool. So it's completely node based and it is a super cool program. But we are here to just get the free VDB files. And here you can see that they provide us some free VDB files. So again, this is the issue. You can see that each VDB is about like six gigs or like five gigs. So it's not scalable at all in games. So you can get any one of these. I'm going to get this one. After downloading it, go to tools and under Zebra VDB, we are going to import a normal VDB sequence. And this is the beauty of this plugin, you know, it lets you compress as well. So let's reference our VDB sequence. You can select the first frame. After you do that, you can see all the data. So you can see it's about 1 GB on my disk. It has three channels. It's about 130 frames. And the three channels are density, flames and temperature. Under the compression settings, you have compression quality. So you can either compress this globally or you can compress individual channels at different quality. So I'm going to compress all attributes globally at a value of 0.6. This usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes. After compression, you're going to get a Zebra VDB file. So as you can see, this is our Zebra VDB Embergen simulation. Now let's drag and drop this in the viewport. This looks good. The scale is a little bit off. So I'm going to reduce the scale a bit. And 
I'm going to double click on this and this is going to give me all the information about this. Under details, we have about 130 frames and this was originally 1 GB and it's compressed down to 250 MB. So it has reduced about four times in size. So that's the workflow guys. And that's how you can use custom VDBs from Houdini or Blender. And you can implement it like this in Unreal Engine. Works super well. Gives great results. I found this thing and I really wanted to share this with you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon page. And that's about it. So I'm going to see you all in the next video.